What is shaking, Internet? This is Salt bringing you the How to Tank for Dummies Paladin Basics Guide for Miss Sependaria. This guide will cover the basic concepts of how to tank as a protection paladin. Um, just a quick note, the background is a video of me running through a one of the Hour of Twilight dungeons. Um, it is on the live server, so you can see my new add-ons and all that stuff, but I'm kind of just winging it. Don't worry about what's going on in the background, it's just for show. So here's what we're going to talk about. First, the basics. Prot pallies are plate-wearing tanks that rely on blocking with our shields and just being beefy enough to take hits to the face like a good tank should. Um, they can dodge and parry as well, but blocking is their main source of survival. Let's first talk about setup before diving into how to actually play a tank, a pally tank. Briefly covering stats, you're going to want lots of stamina and some strength. Uh, the more stamina the better, as strength just kind of helps with blocking, I believe, and uh, and threat, because it does more DPS. But stamina is going to really keep you alive longer. Um, let's see, mastery is going to be your best secondary stat, with dodge and parry coming along behind it equally. Yeah, uh, mastery is best because it gives you bonus block, bonus damage on Shield of the Righteous, which is one of your basic moves, uh, and bonus healing on your Bastion of Light stacks, which we'll cover in a bit. Uh, dodge and parry are equally good, and since both suffer from lower returns at higher amounts, aka diminishing returns, building them up equally is best. Additionally, hit and expertise are not a bad stat for you, because your misses on a boss are going to mean lost holy power, which reduces your survivability. Uh, still, hit and expertise are not something you really should be going for overall, but are nice tertiary stats. Uh, for more detail on what exactly you need, or any caps and stuff like that, please check out a more in-depth guide. This is just for the basics. Uh, let's see, Glyphs are situational like most other ca classes in uh, Mr. Pandaria, but we'll cover the general tanking ones here. Glyph of Alabaster Shield seems uh, an obvious choice for all pallet tanks, increasing the damage of Shield of the Righteous by 20% per block up to 3 times. So like every time you block, you get a stack, and up to 3 times you get bonus damage for Shield of the Righteous. No reason not to have that one, um, as that will be quite a significant damage increase. Glyph of Focus Shield is still around, uh, changing Avenger Shield, one of your moves, to a single target long range move instead of a three target bouncing one. Uh, it does more damage to big bosses over time, so it's definitely a good one if you aren't uh, having aggro, having add aggro trouble. Uh, Glyph of Final Wrath, uh, this one turns your Holy Wrath into an Execute, increasing its damage done to all targets below 20 health, 20% health. Uh, there's no really downside to this Glyph, at least, so it's not a bad one. Uh, let's see, Glyph of Consecration turns Consecration into a targetable AoE instead of just on you. Uh, it could be really good, but uh, I don't like the trouble of setting it up Consecration, even though it's extremely nice to have a ranged AoE aggro device. Uh, the more I practice with it, though, uh, the more this ranged Consecration is growing on me, and it's probably probably a good one to have. Um, also, Glyph of Divine Protection changes your divine protection to a 20% or to a from a 20% reduced damage of for everything to a 40% reduced physical damage making it awesome whenever there isn't lots of magic damage going around um let's see these are probably my favorite glyphs to use as a tank uh, there may be others depending on changes but most are negligible and much more situational so feel free to check them check them out if you want uh, moving on next up is talents Okay, so in Tier 1, they're pretty much all potentially good. Although I'd like, uh, I recommend Pursuit of Justice for the least amount of thought put into it. It's more, more passive than anything else. Uh, let's see, in Tier 2, they don't really matter too terribly much. Uh, let's see, Repentance won't be useful in raiding, I feel, but it could be useful in some mob packs and heroics. Uh, while Fists of the Justice might have its uses in either. Uh, let's see, Burden of Guilt just kind of gives you a nice little passive slow. So whatever, just whatever you want. Uh, let's see, in Tier 3, Sacred Shield seems like your best bet, adding a nice little survival uh, ability to spam. This is almost, I would almost say this is mandatory. Um, Eternal Flame could be useful, but Word of Glory's instant heal is probably generally more what Paladins need than a small heal over time, even if it's better slightly. Uh, let's see, in Tier 4, they're all potentially good. Hand of Purity will be nice for any fights with DOTs. Uh, that one reduces DOTs by 70% or something like that. Uh, Unbreakable Spirit is used to, uh, is, in, reduces the cooldown of your defensive abilities, basically, some of the main ones. Uh, and even Clemency could be great for more Hand of Sacrifices, or any other hands for that matter. 
personally, I like Unbreakable Spirit for the best overall. Uh, because I love my passives. Reduce those, cooldowns great. In tier 5, I personally like Divine Purpose. Again, due to the passive side of it. But I think Holy Avenger will be better overall. Uh, I think Divine Purpose has the better has the potential to be better or worse than Holy Avenger due to randomness. So I like taking I like taking it. Uh, it, it if it procs, it really is incredibly better. Like, if it, you just keep doing those Shield of the Righteous over and over and over again. But for er, for the same price, you can do Holy Avenger once every, I guess, three minutes or so. And you can, like, have Holy Avenger up all the time anyway. So, yeah, it's give and take. I like the randomness passive. That's just me. Uh, let's see, in Tier 6, you are left with really three good options. Um, I personally prefer Holy Prism. Uh, mostly because of its lower cooldown. And you'll be helping out your allies with some bonus healing as well. Uh, let's see. Well, now that you're glyphed, talented, and specced up, let's talk abilities and rotations. Let's see. Paladins have two resources, mana and holy power. Uh, mana is what you use for most of your moves, and most of your moves take a percentage of your mana rather than a fixed cost. So more mana means absolutely nothing for you. Uh, mana shouldn't be hard to keep up as well, as whenever you use judgment, you gain back a big chunk of mana over a few seconds. So as long as you're judging, you should be perfectly fine in the mana department. Holy Power has been slightly revamped since Cataclysm, just for you um, old paladins. You can now have up to 5 Holy Power, with any spell that uses Holy Power only taking up to 3 Holy Power at a time. This basically allows you to store some extra Holy Power in case of overflow, so you don't have to say, Oh, I've got 3 Holy Power, I have to use it now, otherwise it won't be useful. Uh, Holy Power really should only be used for a very small few of abilities, which we'll cover in just a moment. Uh, let's see. Your primary abilities as a Prot Paladin are Crusader Strike, Avenger Shield, Shield of the Righteous, Judgment, Word of the Glory, and some AoE abilities, which we'll discuss in just a little bit. First up is Shield of the Righteous. Uh, it is your top priority as a Paladin tank. Uh, it now costs 3 Holy Power all the time, and gives you a 30% reduced physical damage... Uh, buff for three seconds three seconds you want this up as much as possible um, just a quick note here if you have if you still have shield of the righteous up and you get another shield of the righteous and you cast it it will add three seconds on so that means if you're at two seconds and you use it it'll go up to five seconds it won't go up just back to three so use this literally whenever you can and you will never you'll never lose that buff as long as you keep it up you'll, you'll never lose time if that means anything. Additionally, uh, it gives you a little stacking little buff that increases the amount your next word of glory will heal you. Uh, this can stack up to five times for a 100% bonus in healing power, making it quite substantial as a nice little defensive cooldown. Uh, Crusader Strike is your primary move that you're going to use on cooldown. Uh, it generates one holy power and is on a three or four second cooldown. I think this is depending on weapon speed, whatever meaning you should basically use it every other move. Uh, example will be Crusader Strike, Judgment, Crusader Strike, Avenger Shield, Crusader Strike, Shield of the Righteous, Crusader Strike. You get the idea. Uh, let's see, Avenger Shield is a nice little move that can be used at a long range. Uh, it should be used on cooldown as well, and um, it can also proc a Grand, Cru Grand Crusader proc. Uh, and if that procs and the button starts flashing and you get the big little buff, our big buff on the sides and everything, uh, you should use it. Use it again. Um, when that procs, it will randomly proc, and it will refresh the cooldown of Avenger Shield, and cause it to generate a Holy Power when used again. Uh, so it increases your Holy Power regeneration. Uh, judgment should be used on cooldown as well. This will keep up your mana, do a good chunk of damage, and even gives another Holy Power. I'd say this is more important than Avenger Shield, unless you have that Grand Crusader proc. Uh, don't neglect this, at all, or you will be out of mana. Uh, this will be. This is your mana regeneration as well, on top of everything else. Let's see. Word of Glory is an insta heal that uses Holy Power. For once, you do not want to use this move whenever available, uh, unlike pretty much every other Paladin move. Only when you have three stacks of Holy Power and five stacks of Bastion of Light, which is the stacking buff you get from Shield of the Righteous, uh, do you want to use this. I would recommend using all your Holy Power for Shield of the Righteous at all times, and literally just keeping these stacks up until you really need healing, like a defensive cooldown. Uh, Word of Glory can be used at 1 or 2 Holy Power as well, but 3 Holy Power is what you really want to shoot for when using it. 
Uh, in situations where you need to hit more than one thing, Pally Tanks have a few different moves available. Hammer of the Righteous is a replacement for Crusader Strike since they share a cooldown and basically do similar things to different amounts of targets. Holy Wrath is an instant AoE that should be used on cooldown as well. Uh, it additionally will stun some, some types of enemies, but that doesn't matter. Uh, if Glyft, this will actually do quite a bit more damage to low health targets, like bosses that enrage 20% or something like that. Um, Consecration is a cool AoE that will put down that you put down and damages all enemies nearby over time. Um, I think it lasts for about 10 seconds or so. I don't I don't know the exact duration. Uh, with a glyph, you can actually throw this out somewhere other than where you're standing, uh, and it's a good move to hold aggro with on adds as well. Let's see, even the, note that even for single enemies, even if you're fighting one enemy only, you can still use Holy Wrath and Consecration on cooldown. You won't lose, and you, as long as you'll keep judging, you won't be run out of mana or anything. You can use them on cooldown to increase your DPS and therefore threat, and make sure you have something to press, in case you have nothing else. Uh, the last ability I'm going to talk about before moving on is Hammer of Wrath. Uh, this is an execute that can only be used on targets below 20% health. You should be spamming this once it's available on bosses. It will, it will increase your DPS quite a bit. Uh, just to note, Inquisition is no longer available to Protection Paladins, in case you're wondering, meaning all Hollow Power should be going to Seal to the Righteous and Word of Glory. Uh, okay, now that you know the abilities, now that you kind of know the abilities, let's do button setup. <coughs> First, one should be set to Crusader Strike, two should be Avenger Shield, three should be Shield of the Righteous, and four should be Judgment. These are normally the keys you want to press for single targets. Let's see, five should be Consecration, six should be set to Holy Wrath, seven should be set to Hammer of the Righteous, and eight should be set to Hammer of Wrath. Uh, buttons 4 through 7 are going to be your primary AoE abilities. And yes, I included 4 in there because you still need to use Judgment to not run out of mana. Uh, quickly covering button, bar button priority. Uh, always hit 1 and 4 on cooldown. Hit 2 if it lights up with Grand Crusader proc. Um, hit 3 if available, aka you have Holy, th holy Power, that's primary one, number 1 priority. Uh, when you can't hit any of these, meaning you're in between Crusader Strike... Uh, hit 2 without the proc, um, 5 or 6. There you go. When fighting lots of mobs, uh, hit 7 and 4 on cooldown, and hit and 6 and 7 whenever you can't. I mean, 5 and 6 whenever you can't. Also, 2 if you're dexterous enough. <laughs> but I like the placement of the buttons for a single hand just to get all of them at all times. Like 1 through 4 would be single target, and 4 through 7 would be multi target. There you go. You can still use your Holy Power on Shield of the Righteous by hitting 3 as well. Um, if, you haven't, if you haven't gotten it yet, basically you use Crusader Strike and then anything you want. Assuming Shield of the Righteous isn't an option for single targets. And Hammer of the Righteous for multiple targets. And anything else in between those moves, basically. Um, like I said, Hammer of Wrath should be spammed on cooldown whenever fighting bosses that get below 20% health. Um, okay, moving on to utility spells. Paladins have quite a bit of them. Sounds like my voice is going here a little bit. Oh well. <laughs> Let's see. Let's cover Paladin hand spells real quick. Uh, first up is Hand of Protection, a.k.a. Bubble. Uh, hand of Protection will put an invincibility bubble on any ally, preventing physical damage for a few seconds, but stopping them from doing any physical damage. Uh, you should definitely use this on healers and casters if you can, because they can continue doing their job, basically. Do not use this on yourself, ever. Uh, if a tank gets this, the enemy will just switch to their next delicious target, normally causing death and dismemberment. Um, Hand of Salvation is a situational move that will reduce the threat of a uh, target by a bit over time. Uh, use this on that stupid warrior that can't get rid of threat and is doing way too much DPS. Again, don't use this on yourself. Uh, that kind of defeats the purpose of tanking. Hand of Freedom is extremely situational. It frees the target from snares and roots. Um, it might prove useful in some random fights, but I almost never use it. But I still have it on my bar, as should you. <clears throat> Let's see. Lay on hands is more of a defensive cooldown than utility, but I'll mention it here anyway. Uh, it is a single instant cast that will heal you or any target for 100% of your health on an extremely long cooldown, like 10 minutes. Uh, 
quick note, Forbearance is a debuff that you get when you cast Hand of Protection or Lay on Hands or Divine Shield on yourself or anybody else. Uh, this will not let you cast or anybody cast any of those spells on that target again for a minute, I believe. So be careful if you want to lay on hands after a Hand of Protection or something like that. And no, I'm not going to talk about Divine Shield since it's not anything a tank should ever feasibly use. Uh, let's see. The last hand we'll talk about is Hand of Sacrifice. You place this on an ally for 12 seconds, um, and for 12 seconds, 30% of all damage done to that ally will be transferred to you. This is nice to use as a tank when you're off tanking, meaning another tank is taking the hits and you're just sitting there. Uh, be careful with it though, as it can easily spike up your damage and kill you if your healers don't know what's going on. Also of utility is your rebuke, rebuke spell. Uh, it's your interrupt on a 10 second cooldown. I believe it's 10 second cooldown. I've told that it might be changed. I don't know. Doesn't matter. Uh, as with most of my characters, I like to put interrupts on my middle mouse button for convenience. This is a very short cooldown, so you might want to get used to uh, using it. Uh, note, though, that I also like to have Sacred Shield on my middle mouse button for convenient use, so it kind of switches up in case nothing, in case a fight doesn't need interrupts, I use Sacred Shield there. Um, speaking of that, Sacred Shield, if you talent it into it, gives you a small shield for every, every few seconds. So, quick understanding, you put it up, and for 30 seconds, every 6 seconds, you'll have a shield. So let's say the first 6 seconds you have a 6,000 damage shield, if that goes away, then after 6 seconds, you'll get another 6,000 damage shield. If you don't lose the first shield, like if you only get 3,000 damage in that 6 seconds, then the next 6 seconds, you will get 6,000. It'll just go back up to max, and it won't go any further than that. Uh, um, as a tank, you'll always be taking damage, so any extra defense is appreciated. Uh, it also doesn't cost anything, mana or holy power or anything, so use it whenever you can, as long as it needs to be refreshed. Keep it up at all times. Uh, before moving on to defensive cooldowns, let's say you, you have Hand of Reckoning as your main taunt like any other tank. Um, sadly, Righteous Defense is gone, so the only other move you have to help out uh, with threat is Hand of Salvation. Okay, time for defensive cooldowns. Uh, these include Guardian of the Ancient Kings, Ardent Defender, Devotion Aura, and Divine Protection. Starting with the little guy. Divine Protection is your mostly spammable cooldown at one minute. In Heroics, you can use this nearly every other pack or so, yeah, nearly every mob. Uh, in Raids, try to use this around any small spikes of damage. Uh, when Glyphed, it actually stops a lot more physical damage, up to 40% physical damage reduction, but it doesn't do any magic damage reduction, so keep that in mind. Uh, next is Devotion Aura. This is a new cooldown that basically replaces Divine Guardian. Uh, it reduces all damage for everyone in your party or raid by 20%. Nice little thing. Uses whenever your whole raid is taking damage from an AoE or something like, you know, Black Blood or you know, anything that does damage to everybody. Uh, let's see. Guardian of the Ancient Kings is your big cooldown, reducing 50% of damage for 12 seconds on a 3 minute cooldown. Uh, this will be for those really big hits or if all your healers are dead. <laughs> Good luck with that. Um, Ardent Defender is the last big cooldown, and it's a nice one too. Uh, it'll reduce all damage by 20% to you, which is kind of nice, but additionally, any attack that will kill you instead doesn't. Basically, any attack that would take you to 0 hit points uh, instead heals you up to 15% hit points, uh, but it eats that 20% damage reduction from the ability when it does that. So, it's on a 3 minute cooldown, and is definitely to be used on those high damage spikes, or when you're really, really low, as in an complete emergency, I am going to die. Um, finally, we have two or three non-tanking cooldowns to talk about. Divine Plea and Avenging Wrath and possibly Holy Avenger. Divine Plea is a nice little move that will restore some of your mana over time. And, wait, what am I talking about? Divine Plea's been removed. As far as I can tell, Divine Plea's gone. Skipping that one. Um, Avenging Wrath is your DPS cooldown. Uh, it increases your damage by 20% and your healing by 20%, not that it matters, and should be used at the pull to gain aggro and any time on cooldown after that. If need be, you can use it to increase your healing um, for increased word of glory power, or if for any reason you're healing somebody in the raid. Uh, Holy Avenger, if you took that talent, acts as a big boost in holy power generation, making all moves that create any holy power instead create three holy power every time, 
and do 30% more damage. This is a big boost. This means that you get a big damage boost as well as more Shield of the Righteous procs, meaning you should spam Shield of the Righteous the entire time this is running um, to build up the duration. At a 2 minute cooldown, this should be used on cooldown, or if a fight has like a seriously short burst phase that you have to get in the damage real quick. Lastly, a final cooldown is your tier 6 talent. <clears throat> um, I suggested Holy Prism, and I stick to it, uh, using it whenever it's off cooldown, or for increased healing to all allies close, like, you know, melee. Um, and it does damage to the boss, and it heals everybody close to them, which is basically melee. Uh, if you picked up Light's Hammer, you use it whenever the group won't be moving much. Uh, that does healing and damage in a small radius around the hammer. Um, pretty good thing as long as nobody's moving. Uh, let's see, and, and if you got the execution sentence, you should use it on cooldown to do more damage. Right. But that's not all. As a pallet tank, you've actually got a lot of setup to do outside of your cooldowns and main abilities in the forms of buffs. First up, blessings. You have two options here, blessing of kings and blessing of might. If your group has a monk or a druid, or another paladin, uh, use blessing of might, because the monk and druid only have one buff and that overwrites your blessing of kings uh, if there are no other paladins druids or monks in your group <laughs> small group use blessing of kings um make sure to reapply the buff after each big fight especially if someone died next is seal seal of truth is your best damaging ability so make sure you have it up before starting any fight uh, if you're having trouble with holding aggro at the beginning of the fight shield of the righteousness is actually better up front damage but you'll be losing out damage on longer fights if you leave that on I don't think you should ever really need Sealed of Insight, but it, it will do some nice healing every time you hit, so yeah. Uh, still, truth as numero uno. Uh, let's see. Finally, never leave home without Righteous Fury. This buff should be on at all times while tanking, and never falls off through death or anything like that. Uh, this is what's going to help you keep threat. Hopefully you've enjoyed this guide to Paladin Tank Basics. Uh, please like, favorite, subscribe, all that jazz, and as always, you keep it salty, internet.